and we can start. So hi guys, my name is Rostja Vitek. I'm from uh, Ostrava in Czech Republic. And it seems like I am not able to switch slides. <laughs> oh, there we go. OK, uh, so guys, please uh, be uh, patient with me, because this is my very first uh, presentation in English I have ever had. So I'm a little bit nervous. And those problems in the beginnings are uh, really helpful with that. Uh, so uh, maybe you are a little bit confused, because uh, in the, in the uh, in the program that you get, uh, there is another name. There is Matusz Czerner, who uh, originally was supposed to have this speech, but uh, he couldn't make it, so I stepped in, and here I am. Uh, I work at Shopsys as one of the uh, Shopsys framework developers, and today I'm going to talk about CRUD. Uh, I believe that uh, most of you guys know what CRUD means, but uh, I think it's uh, from time to time, it is good to go back to basics and... Uh, um, so, CRUD uh, is the acronym for uh, basic functions for working with uh, persistent storage, often used in APIs, uh, created with application DB. Uh, these uh, words can be easily mapped to SQL statements inside select update and delete. And of course, uh, can be map mapped to HTTP methods uh, which are used in uh, REST APIs, put, get, post, and delete. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, first example of uh, basic usage of CRUD. We have there a basic class article, which has uh, private properties, uh, author, text, uh, published date, and uh, well, I cannot see it, but I cannot see it here. Uh, never mind. Uh, and those properties uh, can be easily accessed by uh, getters and set by setters. It's the common approach with uh, basic uh, entities. To work with the entity, uh, there is an article controller uh, which uh, has uh, the generic method update implemented. And there you can see that uh, it somehow grabs the article. It's not there, but uh, you can imagine that it somehow grabs the article from database or from some another storage and uh, sets uh, or gets uh, the attributes from request and then uh, sets one by one but using the setters. It's uh, easy. Uh, what's the problem here? That entities often must uh, follow uh, some business rules and uh, they are constrained uh, by the real world scenarios. That means that uh, somehow we need to manage to keep the consistency. Uh, to keep the consistency, it should have uh, also the published date set, and it is uh, very difficult to achieve uh, by the approach that you have seen on the previous slide, because there is no restriction for developers how to how to interact with that object. So, uh, what can we do here? some basic refactoring and move the uh, CRUD methods directly to the uh, article class. And uh, then you can see the implementation of, for example, delete method, which is some soft delete and sets the state of deleted. What is more interesting uh, is the update method, because uh, you can, uh, you can uh, do all the stuff that are, that are necessary for updating the article. Uh, that means you set the state of the article and also set the published date. And uh, for example, when the, st when the state is not, uh, is not uh, accepted, you can, you can uh, throw exep exception, for example. Now, let me take a quick detour, because uh, we are talking about basics. So let's go really deep and think about uh, what object is anyway. Uh, it's some, something that have uh, data and behavior. That means uh, properties, as we've seen before, private properties, and some uh, public methods, which are used as an API uh, for working with that object. Uh, what also object is, is something that uh, models uh, some things from uh, real world and uh, should, uh, uh, should have something about, uh, well, excuse me. I go a little bit bad. Um, 
Yeah, it's, it's really easy, you know, uh, object something that is from the real world and uh, uh, implements its uh, relationships and concepts and behavior and so on. Uh, another thing, uh, what is about uh, object is encaps encapsulation principle. And I've already told you about that uh, it is that object has their properties, which should be, uh, which should be private and not exposed uh, publicly uh, to, to other methods and should be accessed only using uh, the public methods of uh, the object, which are telling us, telling us uh, how, to, how to interact with that object. Uh, in, in other words, we can say that's the principle tell, don't ask. That means uh, we should tell objects uh, what to do and don't ask them about their private data. Um, we can take a look at the example of that uh, of that encapsulation principle, we have simple uh, class bank account, which has uh, its private property uh, balance, and uh, it is not access accessible uh, publicly because uh, it shouldn't be. Uh, it only exposes uh, public methods for uh, deposit and withdrawing, and uh, the interaction with that private property is uh, hidden uh, in those public methods. Uh, what is good and bad about PHP that it allows us uh, proce procedural and uh, object-oriented uh, way of programming, and uh, it's only about uh, it's up to us developers how do we deal with that and uh, if we take advantage of that or how do we use those approaches. Uh, the difference is uh, nice uh, described, uh, for example, by Alex Sharp, the author of uh, small, bulk, small Talk Bike example, when he says that procedural way of programming is uh, uh, only getting information from objects and deciding what to do with them. On the other hand, uh, the object-oriented way uh, is about telling objects uh, what to do, which is, I think, uh, better in uh, complex, uh, in complex uh, applications. Uh, another basic terms that I would like to speak about are uh, anamic and rich domain model. So let's take a look at these. And before that, uh, let's define some terms, just uh, to be on the same boat. So what is domain? Uh, from a dictionary, you can, you can read it's something like uh, sphere of knowledge or something like that. but uh, I really don't know what to imagine uh, about, uh, what to imagine behind these terms. So basically, it is a subject area of your application. That means uh, when we do e-shops, uh, our domain is e-commerce, and uh, the domain has some specific terms uh, which can be used uh, in your application instead of those generic methods that we are talking uh, in the in the beginning of the presentation. Then there is a domain model, uh, which is system of abstractions. Uh, which are describing uh, your domain. And uh, domain object is a part of that, uh, of that uh, domain model. That means, for example, class uh, article, or on e-commerce, it's product, or user, order, or whatever. And uh, then there is a business logic, which is uh, uh, a logic from the real world, which is mapped into your application. And uh, your application should follow these rules from the real world. So we can see the uh, comparison of those, of those approaches. Uh, you can see that anamic domain model has no logic in, uh, in objects whatsoever. Objects in anamic domain model are basically uh, just boxes for, for data. And uh, that leads uh, to, the, to the procedural style of uh, writing code. Uh, but it's a good thing that uh, it clearly separates logic and data. But bad thing about it uh, is at, it, that it is, uh, violates uh, object encapsulation that we were talking about before. Um, it is also called an anti-pattern by, by Martin, Martin Fowler. On the other side, there is a rich domain model, uh, which, uh, which well, in, in that uh, case, uh, the business logic is uh, mainly in uh, domain objects. and. Uh, it, in, it really uh, great encapsula encapsulates data and uh, offers meaningful uh, behavior of those objects. 
that leads, so that means that your application is still consistent by using this model because you know every time what uh, to do with the with the object. And I think it is a better choice, as I said, for uh, for complex applications. So let's take a look uh, at comparison in code. Uh, in anamic domain model, uh, you can see that there is a class worker, uh, which has a property uh, velocity and uh, setters and getters for for that property. And uh, when you need to interact with the worker, you are uh, you can see the procedural style of, uh, of programming there in the class worker service, uh, where is the function work. Uh, it, uh, it takes worker and some task and time and the first thing you need to do is to get the property from the task to get the initial progress then calculate uh, the progress by getting velocity multiplied by time from the worker and finally set the progress of uh, the given task uh, which is the procedural sty style. On the other hand there is uh, the, the rich domain model uh, where you have everything hidden in the in the method work, and uh, you just say to the to the worker work, and uh, it does uh, inside, and you can, you, know, you cannot take care, or you should uh, you cannot take care of the of the implementation itself because it is uh, hidden in the in the method. You can also see that uh, the class task is also uh, refactored in the rich domain model way uh, because you only set progress not uh, or you say make progress and not uh, set progress in the preview as in the previous example so it seems uh, that the problem lies in setters because uh, there is uh, no such thing as setter in real life and uh, there is always a, some better more expressive way of uh, naming your methods it is really uh, good to think about your naming conventions uh, to reflect uh, the real world behavior. That means, for example, uh, as I said, when uh, when a writer publish uh, or finishes his article, he doesn't set the state of uh, published, but he simply publishes it. Uh, in the same way, when a customer uh, makes order, he doesn't set status uh, to finished or paid, but he simply pays it for, or finishes it. So these are the names that you should probably use to be more descriptive and to, to make the code more readable. Um, yeah, as I said, expressive statement, statements lead uh, to more readable code. And uh, there is always a better word for setter. You can use the proper verb. So why to use uh, generic set? Um, yeah, another thing about setters that is that uh, nobody expects setters to do stuff, but uh, sometimes, uh, according to your business logic, it is important to do some other stuff. Uh, for example, uh, well, I will, I will show you, this will be better. Uh, yeah, there is a class order, and uh, when, you, when you finish order, you want to, for example, uh, send uh, email to a customer that the order is finished, but uh, in the set status uh, and when the status is finished, it, it is not uh, it is not clear from the outside that set status does such thing like uh, sending mail. So uh, a better approach uh, in this case would be to uh, implement method paid, and uh, it is it is more clear that it does something uh, with finishing order like. Uh, like uh, sending the email to the customer. In the same way, you can see the method cancel, for example. It's, it's, I think it's more uh, descriptive to, uh, to use method cancel and inside set status to cancel it instead of uh, generic set status method. Uh, and now we're going back to CRUD uh, because it seems like uh, an update in CRUD is very similar to the, to the setter. It does not have a real world, real world uh, meaning whatsoever. There is always uh, some better name that you can use for updating. For example, uh, when my boss is happy with my work, he doesn't set uh, as a, a higher salary to me, 
but hopefully he raises my salary and so on. And now we're getting to the end of my presentation. Uh, as I said before, uh, I think it's good to focus on real scenarios uh, and reflect them in your code, uh, in your naming conventions, to be, to be more descriptive, to avoid uh, unexpected behavior and uh, bugs that are, uh, that are appearing from unclear code. Uh, because the uh, concept of setting or updating is too, too general, and I think it's always better to be more concrete. Uh, you should be focused on uh, real, scenarios, real scenarios and uh, real use cases uh, to have your application more intuitive. Uh, but uh, there is no, no best way of programming. I think it's uh, always about the balance, about thinking about your code. Uh, keeping in mind those techniques of uh, object-oriented programming and uh, always choosing what is uh, best for your uh, concrete use case. But sometimes uh, you can, uh, th there, there could be a use case when uh, CRUD methods are uh, really meaningful for you. For example, when, uh, when uh, co-working with uh, some third-party libraries or, or something like that, where, where you need update, create, read, and delete uh, methods. So let's take a look at uh, one example yet. Uh, there is the article that we have seen uh, in, the, in the beginning of presentation, and uh, we can rewrite it uh, using an adapter uh, to, to use those descriptive methods inside and expose that uh, update method uh, to the public so it, it's, again, it, inside it's more readable in comparison with the, this uh, implementation where you simply set in stuff. Uh, and here you can see that uh, I'm using uh, the real scenarios uh, methods like uh, article rewrite. Uh, then based on the status, I either uh, publish or delete article. And like I said, it's, uh, it's all about balance and thinking what is uh, good in, in, uh, in the concrete scenario for you. Okay, thanks for listening. That's it. Do you have any questions? Yeah.